Mark Stein has left GB News after being forced to sign a contract which suggests he'll be responsible for his own Ofcom fines, which is absolutely outrageous. But now that Mark Stein has broken through the line, um, and it's a line I've held for a very long time, there's a few things I will say now about GB News that I've known for a very long time. People have asked me repeatedly, why am I not on GB News? Surely I should be on GB News. Any day now I'm going to get offered a GB News slot. And there's always been sort of two sides to that. One, would I really want to work alongside some of those people? Two, I know what I know about GB News and what it actually is. And three, of course GB News know that if I was on there, we would have the most views. But they can't have me on there because they know I can't be controlled. Plus, I think there's a Met Police thing against me and a Europol thing. But that's another matter. GB News know I am uncontrollable. Which means that the people who are on GB News, and I've known this for as long as it's been around, are completely controllable. So Wooten, Farage, uh, Fox, all the rest completely controllable. They have a briefing com from compliance, the compliance biatch that Mark Stein speaks of. They agree to uh, keep their comments uh, within certain parameters. It's almost like uh, if you imagine a tennis court or a football pitch. They're, they're given the boundaries of what they're allowed to talk about. And then their job, actually, Farage, Wooten, uh, Fox, all the boys that have given uh, slots, um, is that their job is to make you believe, to convince you that they're the bastions of free speech. And it's a kind of performative art, right? It's here's the small number of things I can actually say. Now I have to make you look and feel as if I'm on the edge of this and I'm bringing you the only free speech there is. Whereas in fact, each one of them knows they have to stick with the parameters, otherwise they lose their position. And they don't want to lose their position, mainly, honestly, because of vanity, because they're paid, because we can't get platforms anywhere else. GP News is kind of the last resort. And for the clicks and for the eyeballs and for being somewhat produced and maybe getting to go to makeup and having a studio and feeling like you have purpose because you go someplace. And I kind of feel like the old lady watching this because I've been through so many cycles of this for so long and have known about GB News all along, which is that uh, employers like my employers at Daily Mail, like my employers at LBC, they want the, the controversy, they want the outrage, they want the clicks and the eyeballs, but what they don't want is any negative stuff that comes with it. I've said to so many of my bosses, you love the noise, but you don't want some of the fallout from the noise. And that's the point with Mark Stein. They love the clicks, but they don't want the fallout for the clicks, which is going to be Ofcom stuff because no one's allowed to speak out against the vaccine. The other thing, and this is the duplicitous thing that I really dislike, is that what should happen right now is that Wooten, Farage, Fox, all the others, I don't know who they are, I don't watch it, should say, we're leaving as well. You get rid of Stein, we're gone. And also we can no longer work in an environment where the compliance biatch tells us what we're allowed to say because it's getting harder and harder to fool the audience and people can see it. People have felt the change, just like at Fox News where the same thing is happening. People can feel that it's not the station that it once was. People know. But instead of coming out, as they should, to side with our family, truthfully, the boys are looking to self-preserve. And that's really the most despicable thing about our side. And that some of the people who are sort of lauded as the front men, oh, what about Farage? Oh, Lawrence? Oh, oh, is that they're playing the game of the people who ultimately are harming our family that we are. None of those boys are out amongst us in Trafalgar Square or with ordinary people facing the challenges that ordinary people face, but they're pretending to be one of us. The other important thing is that for a long time I've known there are stories GB News are either being paid or obligated to take and press. And the one cameraman on this planet that I trust more than any other had to exit from GB News because he was being obligated to film a story for the channel that was not true and that was not authentic. 
and he was being required to frame it up to make it such that it became truth. And because he wouldn't do that, he walked away because he is the authentic truth. So people who want to bring you free speech had to walk away from that channel a long time ago because they saw the direction of travel. Each one of those boys there is basically performative actors trying to convince you they have freedom of speech when they have nothing of the sort. And it's why Wooten and other cheap individuals just keep banging on about Meghan and Harry because they know it's a ground they can talk about. It did get them clicks for a while, but frankly, it's not moving any agenda forward at all. So I still believe that we have to hold discipline on our side. And if people are on our team, loosely, vaguely, in some way, we don't criticise them, which is why I never have criticised GB News until today. But now you know, now Mark Stein's blown the doors off, uh, it is controlled. It's controlled by uh, the big funders, it's controlled by Ofcom and people who can make Ofcom complaints and increasingly it's going to be controlled by wanting to please advertisers in order to achieve additional revenue and it's controlled by the boys who have positions there who are willing to keep taking it up the arse quite frankly in order to keep their positions through vanity, through wanting the clicks, through wanting their pay packet, through having a lack of other alternatives because they're not willing to come out here and do what we do uh, on YouTube and wherever else. And I think, importantly from an Ofcom perspective, Ofcom is a real pain in the arse. So all of the times I've been reported to Ofcom, say at LBC, you get hauled in in front of your boss, you have to have a serious meeting with somebody else from HR present. You get given a bollocking for doing whatever Ofcom says you've done wrong and you have to give your side of the story. And to end on a lighter anecdote, because always I'm about lifting up our side and I don't think criticism is helpful. Um, but I will just say, and I freely criticise everybody who's still on GB News who hasn't had the spine or the moral courage to walk out and back Mark Stein, join him, go and join wherever he's going and leave GB News. If you can't do that, you're a spineless little lizard and a bottom dweller. But to end on a higher note, when I was at LBC, I was reporting, I'd just come back from the States to see the inauguration of President Trump. And the following day, there were the pussy marches. Do you remember the protests with the feminists, the feminazis 2.0, where the O stands for, oh my God, is that thing really a woman? And they had um, signs that said, my vagina is made of steel. <clears throat> and I was saying on the radio, why do these women have to be so disgusting? And when I was writing the content for this, I was drinking a big can of Coors. I think, it, is it four ounces? And I said, I could shove a four ounce can of Coors up my vagina sideways, but I don't feel the need to brag about it. And I said that on air. <laughs> and it got an Ofcom complaint. And I had to be hauled in in front of the teeny tiny little man that runs LBC, who's literally this big. He's literally one of those pathetic little soys. And he read out the line. I could shove a can of cores up my vagina sideways and I don't feel the need to brag about it. And he wanted me to explain why I'd felt the need to say that on air. <laughs> and the thing that offended me most of all was that he left out the punctuation because the comedic timing is in the puncture. I can fit a can of cores up my vagina sideways. And he'd missed out that. And I was trying to argue about the comedic punctuation but he was much more interested in the Ofcom fine that was coming his way because of my vagina. So I end on that note. I've held the line on GB News. Uh, I, now the truth is out and they've always been controlled. Uh, the people you're watching on there are completely controlled. And um, I'm very sorry that this uh, charade has been allowed to continue for so long. And all the best wishes and full support uh, to Mark Stein, who's one of the most brilliant minds of our time. And I hope that he recovers from his dicky ticker uh, in very short order. So that's the inside scoop on GB News.